Welcome back, folks. So today, we before we start, I want to give Tommy Mitchell a shout-out. Um, <clears throat> Tommy reached out and brought up a valid point that I shouldn't make only one more video. So, my plan is now to do a video from Gettysburg to the end of the Mine Run campaign. Then our next video will be on Grant's opposition to the end of the war. So thank you, Tommy, for speaking out, and this is why I love the comments. They definitely have an effect. So today we will begin on July 4th, 1863. Following the failures of Pickett's Charge and the battle at East Calvary Field, Lee now has backed his army off, assuming defensive positions on the ridges west and north of Gettysburg. He is awaiting a federal counterattack, but as the day passes, nothing comes. So he decides to finally withdraw, officially ending the second invasion of the north. He sends his first, second, and third, and parts of the third corps towards the south, towards Fairfield. Meanwhile, other elements of the third move with his long wagon train of wounded southwest in the, the direction of Marion. Now, the Army of Northern Virginia is all between Richmond and the Army of the Potomac, the same way the Army of the Potomac was all between the Army of Northern Virginia and Washington, D.C. So Lee knew it was imperative that he and his army got back to Virginia as quickly as they could and return not to not only their, in quote, country, but their supplies and medical aid. Unfortunately for the South, on this day, July 4th, 1863, the supplies would now stop with General John C. Pemberton unconditionally surrendering the railroad city of Vicksburg, Mississippi, to Ulysses S. Grant. But Lee's objective was saving his army. So they made the painful retreat from Gettysburg back into Maryland and then moving towards Virginia. Now Meade, though he did not want to commit his exhausted army, he instructed his cavalry corps to harass Lee throughout his withdrawal. On July 7th, 1863, Lee's rear guard arrived near the town of Downsville, Williamsport, and Hagerstown. Now, he couldn't cross because there had been a strong rainstorms in the days following the battle. So, where he had been able to ford the river, it had now risen and he could not cross. So, turning back to his time as an engineer, Lee directed defenses built from Downsville in the south all the way to Hagerstown in the north. He could see Virginia, but could not cross. Meanwhile, coming down on him was all the core of the Army of the Potomac. Now, much like Lee, Meade started his career as an engineer, and he could see the defenses Lee had built were strong. They were on high ground facing towards the Union. They had a view of any assault that would come, but they were trapped on the river. Meade did not want to have another blood-soaked battle, but Lincoln was demanding action. But on the morning of the 13th, after no attack came, Lee commanded a casual crossing of the river. His objective was not to fight again, but to save his army. Little did Lee know, though, that Meade had been preparing an all-out assault on his position. But by the time Meade could get reconnaissance, the entire army of Northern Virginia had snuck back across the river. They would again, again, they would engage with Meade again at Falling Waters and Shepherdstown, both actions being inconclusive. It finally ended the Gettysburg Campaign. Lee had casualty, casualties anywhere near 25,000 to over 35,000 troops. He had somehow survived the retreat, but the campaign season was not over yet. He decided to transfer James Longstreet and his first corps to the Western Theater to aid in the fighting against Grant. Lee decided with his wounded forces to set his position on the Rapidan River, using it as a giant defense against the Army of the Potomac. However, he did discover information from his reconnaissance. Meade had sent the 11th and 12th Corps to the West. So, Lee was in a way relieved. The army wasn't really under threat. If anything, it would hopefully be skirmishes. But Meade had an objective. And that objective was to end the war. 
So on October 13th, Jeb Stewart, commander of Lee's cavalry, decided to lead one of his regular cavalry raids. Now, Stewart believed it to be General Teamsters. Uh, a Teamster is kind of like a supply train for the Army of the Potomac. But he, in fact, clashed into the rear guard of the Union Third Corps, who were not having it. Also, men from the Union Second Corps soon arrived to give aid. Lee ordered Richard Ewell with the Confederate Second Corps to engage and rescue Stuart. They would engage the next day at the Second Battle of Auburn. Now, both fights were inconclusive, but the Union saved their supplies, and the Confederates saved Stuart. But also General A.P. Hill and his Third Corps were moving on Ewell's left, and began to engage Union soldiers on the 14th as well. But these weren't any soldiers. This was the Union Second Corps one of the most experienced and veteran corps in the Union Army. The acting commander, Governor Warren, had deployed his corps behind a railroad embankment, so when Hill moved in, his men were ambushed when the Union troops rose up. Warren's, Warren's men were able to capture five of Hill's cannons. It was a decisive Union victory. But when Warren withdrew on October 18th, the Confederates began to tear up the Orange Alexandria rail line which would force me to allocate men and his resources to rebuild the line. But on October 19th, while protecting Lee's withdrawal from Bristow, Jeb Stewart and the Confederate cavalry would turn and face Judson Kilpatrick, who had been harassing the army. They would defeat the Union Cavalier and help Lee reform his positions. On November 7th, though, the last action of the Bristow campaign would occur. Now, Lee had one remaining pontoon bridge, and it was near a place called Rappahannock Station. Now, because the resources had become so scarce, Lee desperately needed this position. But also, another thing occurred in his mind. Meade, in order to take the position, would need to divide his force to crush the Confederates. But Lee had anticipated this, so he devised a plan to strike each force quickly before they could attach to one another. It was actually very similar to Napoleon's tactic during the Hundred Days campaign. But much like the Hundred Days campaign, somehow the commands got confused and the attacks never took place. The Union forces were victorious and Lee lost his bridge. But as winter was dawning, Lee decided to move his forces down to Orange County south of the Rapidan River. However, Lee would not be allowed to begin winter quarters. Lincoln, still angered by Meade's failures at the Potomac standoff, demanded that he have a decisive victory before the winter. For a week, the Battle of Mine Run would continue. Lee would hold his ground, Meade would then disengage, and the fighting of 1863 in the East would finally end for the year. Again, folks, I want to apologize for taking so long to get back on this series. Tomorrow we'll be discussing the Overlands campaign, Petersburg, and the end with Appomattox. And that is it for our Army of Northern Virginia series. Thanks for joining us. Please like, share, and comment. And if you're new to the channel, I hope I can earn your subscription. Thanks again, and see you real soon.